Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there and having a great ending to your day, great ending to your weekend as we head off into another work week tomorrow. Got you an update this evening, really talking about what the pattern looks like the rest of the first half of February. So really talking about the weather over the next 10 days or so. We'll take it all the way out to about the 15th or 16th of this month and really talk about what we're seeing. And I can already tell you for you folks, I don't want to hype anything up. For you winter weather fans out there, and as you know, that does include me, this isn't good news. There, there really is no good news. I'm not going to try to pull a rabbit out the hat here and try to uh, you know, say there's a chance here and there. We'll talk about a couple storm systems that I'm seeing, but really, uh, no, I'm just not seeing any system that's going to deliver appreciable snow really to anybody. So we're, we're going to figure this out, though, because for you warm weather fans, you're, you're going to like what I'm saying in this video. But regardless, the weather's going to do what it's going to do. So we need to talk about what it is going to do. But I can tell you um, <laughs> the first half of February is just not going to be great. And uh, I'm not really seeing any massive flip for the second half of February either. But that is on out. That's on out in time. So we don't know what's going to happen. OK, so we do know February is a shorter month and we do know March can do some crazy things. We saw that last year with the mid-March snow event that happened for areas of the Mid-South. So you never know what March is going to bring. You never know when you're going to have another 1993 superstorm. Um, but, you know, of course, I think that was a generational type storm. But you never know. You never know what Mother Nature is going to bring. But we're going to talk about what we do know in this video and uh, and, and try to get in, into as much detail as possible. Of course, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we have an idea of what the pattern is going to be like. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. It goes a long way in these uh, slower times, which we are certainly beginning to enter. And uh, like the video if you like it. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it. And it gives others an opportunity to do so too. Ever consider joining the channel? It's definitely a great way to support the channel. I think the join tab is underneath the actual videos. I have 27, 28 incredible members that support me monthly. And that really goes so far when things really start to slow down. So I really appreciate the people who are uh, members to my channel. I really do. So let's get rolling. We're going to talk about what the Climate Prediction Center is saying right now. So the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook takes us out through the 15th. Uh, they're saying with some pretty decent confidence, there's going to be above average temperatures for uh, the northern plains, the Midwest, the north central U.S., the Ohio Valley, especially the northeast. Now you see near normal temperatures for the southeast, but this is really because we're going to have a trough that kind of dips down this weekend. For whatever reason, we're in this ugly pattern where during the week it's warm. But on the weekends, when, of course, most of us are off work, it wants to be all cold and stuff like it was this weekend. So uh, it was it was pretty nice here in my neck of the woods in South Carolina. Even under cloudy skies, it managed to warm up into the 60s. But still, uh, it seems like all the warmer weather tends to happen during the week. But hopefully we can flip that sooner or later, sooner than later. So I can tell you around near normal temperatures. The West is going to stay consistently what we call troughing there's going to be cold fronts cool downs and you're going to stay below average i think probably for the foreseeable future the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook takes us through the 13th to the uh to the 19th which takes us clear through the middle part of february even kind of out the range that we have a little bit less confidence on so below average temperatures predicted for the western u.s and above average temperatures predicted for the eastern u.s and central u.s also and there's going to be a battleground in between the storm track will probably go right through this area right here somewhere but it'll bounce back and forth some so this was issued today high confidence that the pattern is just not going to be favorable whatsoever for any kind of winter weather but favorable for above average temperatures i was checking out people's uh, lawns today just kind of riding around i had a lot to do today and uh, i can already tell some some yards are beginning to kind of get some of those uh really early or late well really those late winter early spring kind of weeds popping up that we normally see here in the southeast when we have about one or two weeks straight of kind of rainy and above average temperatures and human uh, temperatures uh humid conditions and certainly i'm starting to see that already here in the south and um, i think we're going to see it more uh, those are always nagging for my uh, lawn for for people who don't know i'm a big yard junkie so i love to keep my uh, yard looking good and i'll show you some i'll show you guys some pictures when we get in the summertime but um certainly they're always a, a pest to deal with but you know just knock them out with some scott's weed and feed and then we're, we're good to go but 
The above average temperatures are going to continue. We're going to take a look at this. The the orange you see on the map, those are higher heights. The the blues you see, those are lower heights. So the blues are typically an upper trough or cut off low or just a trough of low pressure, a cold front. The ridging you see, it's a ridge, which normally means you're going to have above average temperatures in general, most of the case, just like with the troughing that's typically below average temperature. So we'll start this off tomorrow. The ridge fully entrenches into the area for a few days in the eastern U.S. The re only the only thing that's really pushing it on and off is here comes this storm system right here, which we'll talk about here in a second. I'm really just talking about this. But as we're getting to Wednesday, then a trough swings through. This will be, I think this will be pretty, a pretty stout cold front, but a fleeting cold front, meaning it will move in. It'll be pretty cold, at least for the first, maybe the entire weekend for certain areas. See this blue? This is a digging cold front, dipping the jet stream. There, there will probably be some kind of storm system associated with this, more than likely. This will cool us down for our Friday and the Saturday, but it does not hang around long. This isn't a pattern-changing trough. This moves in and moves out. There's nothing locking any kind of cold air in place, and immediately behind that, the ridge sets back up again as we're getting into next week. And then troughing begins to set up in the west out here. And then we get locked into what I think is going to be a well um, long period of time of above average temperatures. We've kind of already had it, but I really think this is going to be a dominating ridge as we get into next week. Could change, could change, but this looks like a, a pretty stout ridge. It's going to bring above average temperatures for the eastern U.S., but we'll, we'll talk about more on that here in a second at the end of the video. What does that mean as far as temperatures? Well, as we're moving forward here, I don't see portions of the southeast getting below freezing again until maybe this weekend, uh, but we're getting into Tuesday. You know, uh, look at this widespread 50s, uh, 60s potentially as far north as maybe areas of the Ohio Valley, and we'll get into Wednesday for highs this coming Wednesday of the 8th. A beautiful, beautiful weather in the southeast, 60s, 70s. And then we're getting into, there might be a little severe weather for areas of the south. We'll talk about that here in a second. Thursday, you're starting to climb back into the 80s, widespread in Florida. 60s showing up as far north as Washington, D.C. Uh, you keep this going here, and uh, you start to get a trough that shows up. You start to cool back down. Highs only in the 30s in the Ohio Valley, 40s as far south as the southern U.S. and the deep south. And this trough swings through, and this is probably going to bring us a chilly weekend. But, you know, I think parts of the North Carolina and Tennessee, Virginia, maybe West Virginia, maybe even Eastern Kentucky, the mountains of those areas, could see some Northwest flow sometime later this work week into early this weekend. I think it's very, very possible, if not likely. And then, you know, Sunday morning, <clears throat> excuse me, it's probably going to be a pretty chilly morning for most of the eastern U.S., but, but nothing too crazy, guys. Nothing compared to what we just saw this past weekend. Uh, this would probably be a pretty chilly morning all the way down in, for you folks in Florida. But after that, we get into next week, and I really think we start to warm right back up. Widespread 60s, maybe even widespread 70s as we get into around eight or nine days from now. But this could this could change a little bit. But what, I'm telling you guys, once you get an established ridge in the pitcher, it's hard to beat it down. You can beat it down for a day or two, and then it flexes its guns again. And it's just, it's just a dominating weather pattern. I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> but you can see 50s getting all the way up to Boston. So, you know, this we'll stop it at the 15th. You know, we'll stop it at that range. As far as storm systems, guys, what we're seeing, um, you know, here comes a system right here. We need to watch a little bit of severe weather into Tuesday. I think there'll be some severe weather for you folks in Southeast Texas, maybe into the overnight hours too. And then I think there could be a severe weather threat somewhere in the South, maybe mid South. There could be a line of storms that kind of works its way through. And then there's going to be, you see this little blue dotted line. That's the 540 line. That doesn't mean that it's freezing at the surface. It's freezing aloft. So, excuse me, there's going to be some kind of cold pocket aloft that's going to generate probably some heavy wet snow somewhere on the west or northwest side of this low pressure. It's probably going to be some pretty heavy rain right here across areas of the Mississippi Valley, the Ohio Valley, and then the Mid-South. And there could be a line of storms that work their, works their way through sometime Wednesday into Thursday. But up here, look at Iowa, you see the kind of the dark green mashing with the blue. Even, even down here in northern Missouri, there could be an area of pretty heavy, wet snow. Low pressure flies right over Chicago. This is mainly just rain. 
rain all the way into the Great Lakes region, but whoever's on these what this west, the northwest side of this low, could get some heavy wet snow. Talking about you, Wisconsin, maybe Illinois, Iowa, and this eventually could work its way somewhere in Michigan. We just don't know who. And this could bring a little bit of winter weather, maybe a mix. It's pretty sad on February 9th or 5th that you're seeing rain as far north as uh, Canada. It really tells you just the, the lack of cold air anywhere. And then, you know, I really think as we probably get into the later part of this week, it turns pretty rainy for areas of the south. In fact, we'll stop it right here. If this is the latest GFS that's running, it's kind of a weird. You got a piece of the southern stream firing off here, bringing in a lot of Gulf moisture. <clears throat> All rain, no southern snow, moving into Friday morning. Okay, here comes our cold air source, which is very quick. Pops off a low pressure kind of off the northern stream. This brings a little bit of snow for Missouri, maybe Kansas City, maybe a backside snow for areas, maybe some heavy snow for areas of uh, St. Louis. I'm not saying this is a forecast. With these little cutoff lows, upper troughs, they're very hard to forecast where they're going to go. Because sometimes they get lost in the main flow of things. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting a little bit of a dry throat here. But um, the ridge is still influencing this pattern. So this is all rain for the southeast. Just a soaker, I think. Another Friday where it's going to be a soaker. And then here comes this low pressure. Decently favorable position, but no cold air source. So another rainstorm for the first half of your weekend. Looking likely for the I-95 quarter with cold air kind of filtering in behind, but it's fleeting. The ridge is already moving in behind. You see these blue lines? That is our cold air. <clears throat> this could bring potentially a snow event for areas of the Ohio Valley, but I'm not, I don't think it's going to be a snowstorm by any means. I tell you that. Uh, but this moves in and the latest GFS has some pretty decent backside snow. You know, I wouldn't say decent as in widespread significant snowfall totals, but I would say another one of these another event. It seems like we've had several of these where we're going to have some backside light snow, flurry snow showers all the way down to the Cumberland Plateau for the for the probably the early part of this coming weekend. This will kick off the northwest flow. If you just happen to be taking a trip to the mountains uh, this weekend, you could see some snow flying around, and then this potentially turns into a bigger snowstorm for you folks. Maybe Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Maine. But it looks like all rain for you folks, like from Boston and New York City. But this moves on off. And then after that, <clears throat> of course, things get inconsistent. But the ridge flexes and uh, just looks like cutter after cutter after cutter, which means that there's nothing allowing for these low pressures to dig down here. And there's no cold air. Euro, same kind of deal, guys. I mean, uh, we'll look in the middle of the country. Here comes this first system midway this week. And we'll stop it here. This is for around Thursday midday. Show some snow for areas of Illinois, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin. This moves on off. Could potentially deliver some heavy wet snow Thursday evening for you folks in Michigan. We'll watch that when we have more details immediately. The next storm fires up behind it. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, this it's not going to be a big system, but it's going to be a difficult one to forecast. You know, we'll stop at Friday evening or Friday midday. This shows a pocket of heavy snow as far south as the Ozarks of uh, Arkansas, southern Missouri, where you guys have had a lot of weather lately um, between ice and just the, the wet snow event a week and a half ago. But, you know, low pressure tries to develop here, bring some wet snow mixed with some rain somewhere in the Ohio Valley. We'll switch it to the eastern U.S. And uh, here it comes. Same kind of deal. You know, it, it pops off. This southern stream energy right here, so it brings us a pretty wet Friday for the uh, the extreme southeastern portions of the country. This moves all and off. Low pressure develops. These don't really merge. So, they, like I said, they never merge, so this doesn't ever become a significant system. <clears throat> but the latest Euro does throw more of a bone as far as widespread winter weather. Saturday morning, you got some snow moving into western Maryland, northern sections of West Virginia, a little bit of snow for Pittsburgh in western Pennsylvania, Ohio, and this moves through, and, you know, we take it all the way to Saturday evening, delivers a little bit of a snow event, very light snow event for areas of southern New England, even for Long Island and New York City, okay, and then this heads on off, and then whatever happens after that, we're not sure. I think the ridge really dominates our pattern after this weekend. Um, blend of all models, guys, I'll just show you this. There's a lack of support from this, from the first system. Here goes the first system. I mean, just uh, there, there, there's really, it, it's going to be a difficult one. 
I think we need to really get into these mesoscale models to really figure out who exactly is going to see snow from this first system midway through the week with a little, it's a little bit of a cutoff low, but I really think somebody could get a few inches of snow somewhere in this region right into here. Okay. And then the second system comes through and, you know, shows a little bit of a signal. Then we go to the Eastern U S and, um, you know, shows a little bit of a signal right here for the North Carolina, Tennessee mountains for a little bit of a Northwest flow. And then just shows a bit of a signal through about now between the and, and between now and the next week for you folks in the northeast but really just main and interiors of the northeast so this is a pretty pitiful uh snowfall signal uh for um uh, the middle of uh of february well i'm sorry the middle of the of uh, winter standards i can tell you that but it's what we're working with for us winter weather fans um but the storm prediction center there will be a little bit of a severe weather threat uh, Tuesday, there's a marginal risk now. This includes, you know, Houston, um, all the way down to Corpus Christi, you know, and everybody in between. So college stations, including including in this for for you folks in Texas A&M, and uh, you know, we'll watch this. This could uptrend, but for now, they have it at a marginal risk, and there's no day four slight risk as of now. But we'll certainly watch this. I, I really think it'll be more of a linear threat. Maybe an isolated supercell gets going with this uh, cutoff low that will kind of climb and move northward into the lower 48. So we'll certainly watch it. But really, the last thing we'll look at here, guys, is a, is a more broader view. It shows the entire um, North America region. And really what's going on, we'll keep this moving. Ridge, like I said, kind of makes this cutoff low fly over the middle of the country. And then here comes a stronger upper trough of low pressure that springs a cold front through the eastern U.S. later this work week into this weekend. <clears throat> storm system uh, surrounded with it but ch check it out this ridge of high pressure immediately i mean flexing all the way up into canada immediately replaces this trough and then this is when i really think the pattern begins to get dominated here if you're wondering what time frame we're at this is the morning of february 13th you see all the uh, warmer colors higher heights over the um eastern u.s and then look troughing sets up over the central to western U.S. and yeah, this is what you call a negative PNA, um, and it just which stands for basically cold in the west and warm in the east, and it's just it's just a terrible look for you folks in the eastern U.S. and, and a lot of folks in the west and the central U.S. Um, but this isn't a great look. You keep it, you even keep it going all the way out for the next 15 days, and there's nothing, N nothing even in fantasy land pointing to any kind of shift in the pattern. Okay, well, we're all the way at the 20th of it at this point of February, and you still have all the cold air dumping into the west and then ridging in the east. So there's been some signs and some talk that maybe very in, at the very end of February or early March that there will be a time period to watch for the eastern U.S., but of course we're starting to enter more of an unfavorable just climate period in general as we're starting to get really late in winter. So that's all I got. Um, I can tell you guys, there's probably going to be a couple evenings this week where I might not do a video. Um, I just, you know, really talking this to death and really going over the same information. I, I just seems like it, it's not, it's not really useful. Um, but you know, we'll see how it goes. And we're certainly going to try to figure out that system in the middle of the country midway through the week for you guys that live there. I'm not going to let up on that. And we got to watch the, the system this weekend. It could be a tricky system, but for now, I'm not showing, I'm not seeing anything, you know, worth really diving deep into. So sorry for you winter weather fans. I, I know that, I know that some people are still clinging for something and, and, and deep down I am too, but at the end of the day, it is the weather. It's going to do whatever it's going to do. And uh, you never know what late February can bring guys. I've seen some crazy winter weather in late February and early March. Um, and we all know what happened on March 12th and 13th of 1993. So I think a lot of people always point to that, to, uh, to, 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 you know, always say, hey, you know, it ain't over until it's over. But to me, once you start to get, if I get to March 1st and I look about 15 days out and I see nothing, to me, that's when I check out. I fully check out winter. I'm done with it. But, um, this is where we are. That's all I got, guys. Y'all have a great ending to your weekend, and I'll be with you guys bright and early on Monday morning. God bless.